Welcome back, everybody, for some more Lords of the West campaigns. We finished the first of our three new campaigns with the uh, the Britain campaign with Edward Longshanks. So now we're going to go from the enemies of William Wallace to the enemies of Jean of Arc with the Grand Dukes of the West. And this is going to be the Burgundian campaign, so it's going to be the first time we're going to be playing with a new civilization. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So we have the Grand Dukes of the West, 1407 to 1431. For decades, the Dukes of Burgundy have been embroiled in a bloody struggle over control of the mad French king using their cunning military prowess and immense wealth. However, as the blood they, that they spilled is paid for with blood of their own, their focus turns increasingly northwards as they aim to create a kingdom of their own. In this campaign, you'll play as the Burgundians. So let's get into this, shall we? Got the Holy Roman Empire, the Low Countries, Burgundy, France, England, Paris, Orléans. Let's get into this. Tomorrow, when Joan of Arc burns at the stake, I want you to watch carefully. Well, that's pretty, uh, Not the young rip. woman in the flames, but the men who sentenced her to burn. The English will carry out the sentence, but when nothing but her ashes remains, it is the Grand Duke of the West, our Duke of Burgundy, that will have seized a triumph. For you see, this spectacle is not really about the Maid of Orléans. Her death is only as important as the benefit that it brings us. What burns on that pyre is not Joan the person, but La Pucelle, the symbol of the French resistance. You are young, my son. You have never seen our duchy as anything but a powerful state. But we were not always so mighty. In the greater tale of history, Burgundy is but a newborn power, carved from the lands of the kingdoms and empires that surround us. Our ascent began with John the Fearless, the father of our current duke. Up until then, the Dukes of Burgundy and the Armagnac faction had been equal rivals, fighting for influence at the court of the mad king of France. Louis, the leader of the Armagnac faction, had been using the funds of the French crown for years to stifle John in any way possible. He also boasted of having bedded John's wife. Oh. Tiring of these insults and Louis' abuse of royal influence, John decided to end their rivalry for good. Just three years into his reign, he sent 15 men to stab the Armagnac Duke to death on the streets of Paris in broad daylight. It was a true show of force. In one bloody act, John established himself as the most powerful duke in France. The Armagnac faction, now leaderless, began preparing for a long war. To keep the Burgundians occupied, they supported a revolt in the city of Liège, which was ruled by John's brother-in-law, the Duke of Bavaria. John the Fearless would not let such unrest spoil his plans for the Grand Duchy. And so he marched his armies north to a small village outside Liège called Bonté. Alrighty. So here we are with Burgundy. And as the campaign suggests, I really am a little sus in the Civ existing in the game because it only very late in the this time span of AoE 2 differentiated itself from the surrounding kingdoms and empires. It's still pretty much culturally the same as France, and then was eventually absorbed back after just this uh, smallish time frame. But it is what it is, and we have Burgundians in the game, and they are pretty interesting. Um, the Burgundians are restricted to a pop limit of 150, and you cannot advance to Imperial Age. Six villages support, that support the rebels are located in the vicinity. You can plunder their trade workshop mills and markets for additional resources. You can trade with your ally for additional gold income, but ensure that your enemies do not wreak havoc upon your trade routes, especially if they're crusaders. Uh, John the Fearless has recruited siege engineers from the Flemish cities whose expertise provides the Burgundians with the means to construct capped rams. Okay. 
And of course we're in purple. I would have been very sad if we were in anything other than purple as Burgundians, man. John the Fearless and his army have assembled to the west, accompanied by some villagers which can set up a camp. Uh, and we are already in Castle Age. Makes sense considering we're already pretty late into the AoE2 time frame. Uh, the city of Liege is located to the southeast. The rebels will defend the city fiercely with skirm, spearmen, and archers. As long as the as long as the city's supply camps green remain attacked, the Liege will also make use of gunpowder units such as hand cannons and organ guns. What? What? Uh, your ally, the Duke of Bavaria, Bavaria, has set up his camp to the north. Eager to take back the Liege, the Duke will send heavy cavalry and monks into battle. Six nearby villages support the rebels, uh, but they can be plundered. Alrighty. Ah, here's John the Field. He's very purple. He's like aggressively purple. Alright. So uh, I will go over. I'll just show you real quick. Um, in case people are not familiar with Burgundians and what they do, their eco upgrades are available one age earlier. So you can get. Um, all this stuff one age earlier. Your stable tax cost minus 50% and it can research Cavalier in Castle Age. However, you do miss Bloodlines. And your gunpowder units have plus 25% attack. Your relics are going to be better. And you have some other stuff as well. Also, the Coustier, as I'm recording this, is technically the day after the DLC comes out. Because yes, I recorded all of Edward Longshanks in one day. <laughs> um... And even this, I'll, I'll probably, this is probably the last one I'll record tonight. But everything from a Medward Longshanks one through this one is recorded within the same time frame of me waking on the day that the DLC comes out. Anyway, I'm just going to be scouting around a little bit. We don't really have much of an eco. Uh, what we should be doing... Bonjour! So friendly. Hmm. So... I think we should be trying to attack pretty early. Uh, the surrounding villages. Also, uh, the Duke of Bavaria is here to the north, and he is our friend. It will probably betray us. Wait, why is there a, a chopped tree right there? Okay. But yeah, this Civ is a really strong economy. You can see I can research two man saw. Not that I, I really can right now, but you get the idea. Don't quite have the, the eco for that just yet. And we have a pretty high pop limit too. 150. Also, this is the moderate difficulty campaign as far as DE considers it. So this should be a bit of a step up in difficulty from Edward Longshanks, which was pretty easy. But it was also supposed to be easy, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So Liege has two castles. And we are going to have to take him down with Cap Rams. But yeah, as our economy is very small right now, getting some additional um, additional resources. There we go. I don't know why I can't talk. Maybe it's because I've recorded like many hours of campaign videos today and also streamed. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, loot markets, mills, and trade workshops. So, there's a market. Buy a little stone. I mean, Liege's score is very high. I mean, they're a big old town. Now, I'm not, I'm not one who really advocates jumping to conclusions on the day a, game, or a patch is released, a DLC in this case. 
but uh, the Burgundian unique unit, the Coustier, is the one that gets like a huge amount of uh, extra attack every short timer. Um, but yeah, their, their unique unit seems very powerful, let's say. Get food from the mill and then wood from the trade workshop. Feels good, man. Is it, it is a. Wait, what? Oh. oh, my scout died somewhere over here. That's fine. Lumber and stone were stored in this trade work. Oh, who called it? Or Lou called it for once. Yeah, let's take that for real quick. C. Oh yeah, but you start in Castle Age, so you don't really get to take amazing use of their researching Ecotex one age sooner. But it's not too big of a deal. Anyway, seem to be more mills over here. We can certainly use them to boost our eco. Because we definitely can still use that. Also keeping our eyes peeled for relics. Uh, I'm busy being fearless? Yeah? Wait, is there no gold on this map? I just realized. Oh, no, there is. Wait a minute. I just literally TC'd a bunch of gold. I'm so smart, guys. Uh, but we can always trade. Uh, but you're getting 71 gold per trip, so it's a pretty decent trade route. But yeah, I mean, we start with a pretty good army. And these guys are quite weak. And Liege hasn't attacked us yet, although they do seem to have a pretty big and scary city uh, with their organ guns somehow. Not even Portuguese, man. Okay. I don't know why we're neutral with Grey. I mean, it means we don't kill their villagers. I don't know if there's any reason for this, but I'm not going to... Oh, uh, see, so you can also research guilds in Castle Age, for what it's worth. You said that already last time. Anyway, let's start preparing our war machine for our assault on Liege. Now, Burgundians, as you might expect, are a cavalry civilization. So, a uh, cavalier from Castle Age, it shall be. Uh, unfortunately, though, their siege is really bad. I'm pretty sure I lost a bill there. Where are you going? Yeah, John the Fearless has uh, somewhat fearful stats for being a hero unit. Edward Longshanks is way better. Oh, Rebel Supply Camps. Um, anything else of interest over here? Not really. Don't... Oh yeah, let's attack them over here. Oh, they're probably neutral so they don't attack our trade carts. There we go. There's some Hornlu thinking. Anyway, we're almost reaching our uh, 
maximum amount of villagers we'll realistically need. Let's get our Cavalier for 150, 150. Husbandry for 75 food. Pretty good, man. Okay, so we go from... Okay, that's actually a plot twist. We go from having just a, you know, straightforward scenario, you take down two enemy castles, to you becoming super angry and then trying to kill all the peasants, which is probably going to make your uh, Bavaria Duke cousin, whatever his relation is, guy, not too happy that you're slaughtering his people, and then he'll probably turn on you. That's still a pretty neat plot twist. Uh, wait, hand cannons? You're not in Imperial Age. Eh, do have to deal with them, I guess. Let's get the castle up. I don't like how the new civs have their unique have unique castle designs. It's not that the castle designs aren't good. I do think they look very nice. I just don't like how it's inconsistent with everything else in the game. You know what I mean? Now, unlike Franks, the Burgundian unique unit is a cavalry, the, the Gustier. So, you don't really have as obvious an answer. Okay, honestly, I wish Burgundian Vineyards... Okay, it converts all your food into gold, two food for one gold, and then it makes your farmer slowly generate gold. Like, I wish I could just get this for the... the second effect. Like, the afterthought effect. Just to get a little bit of extra gold income. I don't know the exact stats on it yet, but it's not too much gold. Otherwise, it would be super OP. But then we'll be making some Coustier, because speaking of things that are super OP... We don't pass judgment on things right away here. <clears throat> so yeah, there's lots of eco to raid outside the city. Uh, let's get some extra markets ready for trade, just in case. Yeah, they don't have Imperial Age Blacksmith upgrades. Oh, here they are. 8 plus 36 attack, guys. The epitome of balance. One-shotting that hand cannon here. Oh my god. So yeah, I mean, like, Burgundian Cavalier and Castle Age, it's pretty good. Um, you essentially end up with knights that have plus two attack because not having bloodlines means you don't have more HP than regular knights. But you do have two more attack. Uh, but the fact that you also get Paladin that's half cost, and you can also research it as soon as you uh, reach the Imperial Age, I think is even better than the fact that you get Cavalier and Castle Age. Which is pretty good, by the way. 
Although I'm still not sure if you really want them as like a pocket sieve in team game. Maybe just because of the Coustier, but if you're looking at the Civ on a how good are they as like a pocket paladin Civ, their siege is awful, and you don't end up with the best paladins ever as you miss bloodlines, so you don't um you just don't have that staying power in the late game. But it'll be interesting to see how they play out. Forgot about these guys. Not that I'd ever do that, because I'm a great AoE2 player. Drop a castle over here. Uh, sure, let's get some trade cards. Oh yeah, I forgot about the rebel supply camps. Destroy the depots so the Liege rebels can no longer make use of their cannons. Our Duke has been wounded. Oh. Return him to safety so that he can recover from his wounds. Whoops. More. Grab guilds, why not? Oh, that's a lot of Coustier we have queued up. Uh, our push is kind of getting... Nah. That's the technical term for it. But yeah, like, after the charge, you can see it becomes, like, a really mediocre unit. It's a, it's a knight with five less HP and two less attack. Between charges. But, like, and then it's, like, boom, it's insane. It's like the unit is balanced by its inconsistency, which feels like a Rambai. Which is why they were changed in the last patch, because that doesn't really feel great to play or play against. Population or civilian population 15 or less. Also, Coustier are super cheap. 55 55. I mean, they're not super cheap, but they're fairly cheap. Whoa. Getting a little bit of lag for some reason. Um, hopefully that's all okay and isn't, like, coming through too po too badly on your end. You know, our initial objective was to destroy the castles and we're going to do it anyway, goddammit. Oh, also, guys, you can't use the charge attack against buildings. Only units. So it's not, otherwise you'd be, like, amazing building slayers. Wait, they have three castles. They lie. Well, I kind of have to get the castles anyway, since the villagers are hiding inside the castle. So yeah, Coustier actually are really bad against buildings. Just really mediocre attack. Actually, it's probably really unclear. Because when the charge is full, it will show they have a ton of attack, but they won't actually be dealing that damage because they have to, you know, use the charge attack. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, one shot a unit, mediocre, 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 one shot a unit. Okay, 34 bills for them. Sorry. 
Yeah, see, like, I one-shot that pikeman, one-shot that vill, but now the unit's, like, kind of mediocre for a little bit. But honestly, the, the recharge time is fairly fast. Also, their weapon's really cool. It's like a Naginata, but French. Oh, that guy got left out. 20 bills! Uh, there we go. Whoa! Whoa there, man. Uh, hey, Duke of Bavaria, you gonna stand for this? Oh. Oops, sorry. For John the Fearless. He rode in triumph to Paris, and his armies entered the city without a fight. The Armagnac plot had failed. But since they had not openly waged war on him, John could not yet exact his revenge by force. Instead, John had the 15-year-old son of the deceased Duke brought before him. Still mourning the death of his father, the boy was forced to forgive his father's murderer in public. A cruel act, you say? And that it was. But remember, my son, that cruelty was not John's goal, only a means to an end. By orchestrating this public display, John showed not just the boy, but the entire house of Armagnac on their knees, kissing his feet. It was one insult too many for the proud Armagnacs, and the struggle between the two factions would soon turn into open war. Oh boy. Super insane KD, naturally. Not too tricky of a scenario, but it's kind of the introduction one, and this one, uh, this campaign does have six scenarios as opposed to the other two which have five. And, uh, I didn't do a very good job of doing the bonus objectives, but they didn't really feel all that necessary. Kind of go for the city. I do- I, I thought that yellow would turn on you, because he doesn't really do a whole lot else. That was a little strange. It, it was cool, though, to see, like, the- Okay, you're supposed to take the city, and then, oh, they're, uh, they're angry at you or something, and then you're, like, snapping and going to killing all the peasants. So, yeah, that, like, the... That was, I think, pretty cool from a storytelling standpoint. Anyway, that was number one, A Kingdom Divided for the Grand Dukes of the West, and number two, The Wolf and the Lion. I'm the wolf. I don't know who the lion is. Maybe the Lannisters. I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.